Well, hello, Shoreline. This is your uh, this is your devotional for Friday, April tenth, and we've been walking through Psalms together. And I actually I'm not reading every Psalm, but we're in the sixties now. I hope we don't get to Psalm 150 before this thing's over. I hope we get to stop in the eighties or nineties somewhere. But but this week we've looked at three different uh, Psalms in the early sixties of the Psalms, and I want to read to you from Psalm sixty three, the opening verses. Listen to God's word. Let Him speak to your heart. You God are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. You can just feel the psalmist saying, I'm I'm thirsting, I'm yearning, I'm longing for you. And we should have that kind of desire in our hearts as well. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name, I will lift up my hands. I want to just share two reflections out of this simple portion of Scripture. First, and we can hear it in the tone of the psalmist, there's this thirsting, this longing, this yearning for God. I want to challenge you in this season. Seek after God. Long for God. Spend time with Him. It's easy in hard times to actually distance from God and push Him away, but instead, Spend time at his feet, open his word, talk to him in prayer. Listen for his voice, share your concerns, talk with God, but yearn and long for him more than you ever have before. And then second, and the psalmist does this, open your lips, praise God, raise your hands, glorify him no matter what. Whatever happens in this world, with all of our ups and downs, keep your focus on him, your eyes on him, your heart on him. Seek after God and then celebrate. Give praise. Lift your hands. I look forward to bringing God's word on Sunday, just a couple days away. And and it's going to be an exciting time of celebration. An exciting time as we gather for Easter Sunday and celebrate the resurrected Jesus Christ. And if you haven't joined us for a Good Friday service yet, today is Good Friday. We have an evening service. Check the website for details. But services through the day and then an evening service. I hope you can join us. Good Friday service and also for Easter services. Will you pray with me? And then Dr. Rick Alexander is going to share a few words with you. Lord Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to gather like this with people who love you, who are hungry for you. And Lord, we pray that we would long for you. We would yearn for you. And we would worship and praise you even in this time. Whatever we face, Let our desire for you and our praise of you continue to grow. We pray this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Well, now Dr. Rick Alexander, the vice president of our church board, will share a few things with you. Hello, Shoreliners. Well, today is Good Friday, and as I reflect upon this solemn day, I want to share with you a profound truth, and that is that no matter how much we as individuals or as families are sacrificing during the COVID-19 pandemic, It pales by comparison with the sacrifice Jesus made by going to the cross and dying for our sins. And I would like to remind you that we're streaming live Good Friday services today at 12 in the afternoon and 7 p.m. And strongly encourage you to check those out online on our website. I thought it would be helpful in this this week's update to show you graphically how we as a county are comparing with other counties when it comes to the COVID virus epidemic. Confirmed cases of COVID-19 are typically reported on a county by county basis. And then with a slight delay, that information is transferred to the state and federal governments. With all eyes on local health departments, it's easy to lose perspective. The data I'm gonna show you is from nine nearby counties since the start of the coronavirus epidemic. Remember that all these figures only represent the number of known cases. Testing still lags and many more people are presumed to be carriers of the virus, even though they haven't been tested. The counties selected for this comparison are neighbors of Monterey County plus Sonoma County, whose population numbers and rural coastal character are similar to ours. In this slide, we see the number of new cases of COVID-19 in Monterey County compared to other counties in California. I apologize that the uh, top line is um, incomplete. That would be uh, Ventura County. 
There are two important aspects of this graph that I'd like to point out. The first of which is since March 5th, we've had fewer cases of COVID-19 in Monterey County compared to the other counties in the graph. In addition, we are starting to see a flattening of the curve here in Monterey County. Hopefully within the next several weeks that will not only continue, but we'll start to see uh, a decrease in number of new COVID-19 cases. This table demonstrates the number of COVID cases in Monterey County compared to other counties in California. As we can see, things look very favorable and hopefully this will continue. Uh, in Monterey, as of Tuesday of this week, we've had 63 confirmed cases. I believe that's now up to 70. We've had two deaths that remains the same as of today. And now we've completed about 1,500 tests. Cases per 100,000 residents is 14.4. Out of a population of 433,000, we've had 12 people recovered and our first case was confirmed March 17th. I think this looks very favorable for us as a, a group of Monterey County residents and I hopefully uh, this trend will uh, not only continue but improve as time goes by. The final graph I'd like to show you today was developed by the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation. It is attempting to show the coronavirus surge by state and project when each state will peak. As you can see, the model predicts California will see fewer deaths than New York, for example, despite having twice as many people living in the state. That gives California a much lower death rate relative to its number of residents. Not shown in this graph, daily coronavirus deaths in California is projected to peak April 15th, after which we're going to see declining numbers with resolution sometime probably in mid to late May. All of this is very good news for us as Californians and demonstrates the uh, positive effects of social distancing. I might add, however, that these are merely projections and they are updated on an almost daily basis. All of this, however, does look very, very good and positive for us as a local community as well. Well, Shoreline, I hope uh, you enjoyed this update uh, and I didn't uh, overwhelm you with uh, a lot of technical information, but I thought the graphs would be very helpful as well as the table in sort of illustrating in um, a pictorial form where we are with the COVID virus. Um, I wish you all a very happy Easter and uh, look forward to talking to you next week. God bless you.